quick physics tutorial. Hello everyone. In this video, we will discuss on the basic principles of biophysics, in relation to quantum mechanics. Biophysics is a field that applies the theories and methods of physics, to understand how biological systems work. It is also an interdisciplinary field where mathematicians, scientists, pharmacologists, and engineers, use their skills, to explore and develop new tools for understanding biological phenomena. To start with, physical laws or concepts such as mechanics, hydrodynamics, optics, electrodynamics and thermodynamics are used to explain physiological observations like muscle contraction, neural communication, and vision. A second fundamental aspect of the transformation emerged from the search for universal principles governing the world around us. In the 20th century, it was realized that the laws of physics and chemistry could equally explain forces in any biological phenomena, and that no new fundamental principles were necessary to explain the organisms and interactions which make up the living world. In this lesson, some of the basic concepts and laws of modern physics relevant to biology will be discussed. It all started with this question in mind. Is light a wave, or a particle? Early in the 19th century, experiments were suggested and made to show that light is a wave motion. A key figure in this endeavor was Thomas Young, who studied diffraction and interference of light in 1803, with results that gave strong support to the wave theory of Christian Huygens, as opposed to the particle or corpuscular theory of Isaac Newton. Further contributions were made by many other researchers, among them was Augustin Jean Fresnel, who showed that light is a transverse wave. Furthermore, the mathematical theory of electromagnetism by James Clerk Maxwell, set up in 1864, led to the view that light is of electromagnetic nature, propagating as a wave from the source to the receiver. While Heinrich Hertz discovered experimentally the existence of electromagnetic waves at radio frequencies in the 1880s. Meanwhile, in 1900, Max Planck developed a theory of blackbody radiation, to describe the distribution of energy from a black body by its intensity or power per unit area. Black body is defined as an ideal system that absorbs all radiation incident on it. The electromagnetic radiation emitted by the black body is called, blackbody radiation. Under this theory, the energy of an oscillator can only have certain discrete values, E, sub, N, equal to, N, H, F. Where, N, is a positive integer called quantum number. F, is the vibration frequency, and, H, is Planck's constant. In this way, a black body, absorb or emit energy when making a transition from one quantum state to another. Black body radiation, was the first phenomenon explained with a quantum model. In the latter part of the 19th century, at the same time that data were taken on thermal radiation, experiments showed, that light incident on certain metallic surfaces causes electrons to be emitted from those surfaces. This phenomenon is known as, the photoelectric effect. Initially, the experimental results contradict all classical predictions of photoelectric effect. A successful explanation of the photoelectric effect, was given by Einstein in 1905. Einstein extended Planck's concept of quantization to electromagnetic waves, as in a blackbody radiation. Einstein assumed, that light, or any other electromagnetic wave, of frequency, f, from any source, can be considered a stream of quanta or photons. Each photon has an energy, E, equals, H, F, and each moves in a vacuum at the speed of light, C, where C is equal to 3 times 10 to the power of 8, meter per second. Einstein predicted, that the maximum kinetic energy of an ejected electron, is proportional to the frequency of the illuminating radiation, where the symbol phi, is the work function of the material. Under the photoelectric effect, 
the maximum kinetic energy of photoelectrons, is independent of light intensity. Electrons are emitted from the surface of the metal almost instantaneously, or less than 10 nanoseconds after the surface is illuminated, even at very low light intensities. The incident energy appears in small packets, and there is a one-to-one -one interaction between photons and electrons. No electrons are emitted if the incident light frequency falls below some cutoff frequency, F, C, whose value is characteristic of the material being illuminated. No electrons are ejected below this cutoff frequency regardless of the light intensity. And the maximum kinetic energy of the photoelectrons increases, with increasing light frequency. A photon of higher frequency carries more energy, and therefore ejects a photoelectron with more kinetic energy than a photon of lower frequency. In 1919, Einstein concluded that a photon of energy, E, travels in a single direction and carries a momentum, equal to, E, over, C, or, H, F, over, C. In 1923, Arthur Holly Compton and Peter Debye, independently carried Einstein's idea of photon momentum further. They explained their experiments by treating photons, not as waves, but as point-like particles having energy, H, F, and momentum, H, F, over C and by assuming that the energy and momentum, of the isolated system of the colliding photon-electron pair, are conserved. This figure shows the quantum picture of the collision, between an individual X-ray photon of frequency F, sub, O, and an electron. In their quantum model, the electron is scattered through an angle phi, with respect to this direction, as in a billiard ball type of collision. Take note that the symbol phi used here, is an angle, and is not to be confused with the work function, symboled as phi mentioned previously. Notice that the electron recoils just as if struck by a classical particle, revealing the particle-like nature of the photon. The shifted peak at lambda prime, is caused by the scattering of X-rays from free electrons, which was predicted by Compton, to depend on scattering angle, as in the Compton shift equation, where, m, sub e, is the mass of the electron. Compton's measurements were in excellent agreement with the predictions of the Compton shift equation. These results were the first to convince many physicists, of the fundamental validity of quantum theory. The success of the particle model of light, in explaining the photoelectric effect and the Compton effect, raises many other questions. If light is a particle, what is the meaning of the frequency and wavelength of the particle, and which of these two properties determine its energy and momentum? And many more consequent questions were raised. In 1923, Louis de Broglie postulated, that because photons have both wave and particle characteristics, perhaps all forms of matter have both properties. This highly revolutionary idea had no experimental confirmation at the time. According to de Broglie, Electrons, just like light, have a dual particle wave nature. De Broglie suggested that material particles of momentum, p, have a characteristic wavelength that is given by the same expression. Because the magnitude of the momentum of a particle of mass, m, and speed, u, is mass times speed, the de Broglie wavelength of that particle, is lambda, equal to, h, over, mu. Furthermore, in analogy with photons, de Broglie postulated that particles obey the Einstein relation, E, equals, H, F, where, E, is the total energy of the particle. The frequency of a particle, is then equal to, E, over, H. The dual nature of matter, is apparent in both equations, because each contains both particle quantities, P, and E, and wave quantities, lambda, and F. Three years later, Davison and Germer succeeded in observing electron diffraction, and measuring the wavelength of electrons. Their important discovery provided the first experimental confirmation of the waves. Proposed by de Broglie. A practical device that relies on the wave characteristics of electrons, is the transmission electron microscope, that is used for viewing, flat, thin, samples. In many respects, 
It is similar to an optical microscope, but the electron microscope has a much greater resolving power because it can accelerate electrons to very high kinetic energies, giving them very short wavelengths. The shorter wavelengths of electrons give an electron microscope a resolution that can be 1000 times better than that from the visible light that is used in optical microscopes. As a result, an electron microscope with ideal lenses would be able to distinguish details approximately 1000 times smaller than those distinguished by an optical microscope. Whenever one measures the position or velocity of a particle at any instant, experimental uncertainties are built into the measurements. According to classical mechanics, all variables of particles are measurable to an arbitrary uncertainty, given good enough equipment. On the other hand, the Heisenberg uncertainty principle is a fundamental theory in quantum mechanics that defines why a scientist cannot measure multiple quantum variables simultaneously. So, if one knows the precise momentum of the particle, it is impossible to know its precise position, and vice versa. Likewise, one cannot measure the precise energy of a system, in a finite amount of time. This is because of the wave-like nature of a particle. A particle is spread out over space, so that there simply is not a precise location that it occupies, but instead occupies a range of positions. Similarly, the momentum cannot be precisely known, since a particle consists of a packet of waves, each of which have their own momentum. So that it can be said, that a particle has a range of momentum. It is important to remember, that the uncertainty principle, is independent of the measurement process, and is based on the wave nature of matter. Hence, quantum mechanics, is accepted as the only correct description of physics. However, for practical calculations on macroscopic objects, in classical mechanics, it is sufficient to use Newton's laws. And for calculations, of atomic level phenomena, we use quantum mechanics. And that's it for now. For your exercise, write at least three practical applications, or technological innovations, related to the concepts discussed. Maximum of five words per answer. If submission has been made, please disregard this exercise. Thank you, and see you in our next video.